Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial. In this one, we are going to talk about regex or regular expressions. It's a very important tool to have in your natural language processing journey. We are going to use it a lot and um, it's very, very important. I can't tell you how much important it is. First, let's take a look at the definition. According to Wikipedia, a regular expression, regex or regex expression, sometimes called rational expression, is a, um, in theoretical computer science and formal language theory, a sequence of characters that define a search pattern. Usually, this pattern is then used by string searching algorithm, like find or find and replace operations on string or for input validation. Um, so, long story short, this is a sequence of characters, a pattern characters, that can define and find uh, patterns in text, replace them, and search for them. So, uh, what we are going to do in this tutorial using regex um, is covering the regex functionality in Python and the regex patterns and the grouping of the regex. And uh, an important thing to mention here is regex is not a, uh, a Python thing. It's already implemented in all the languages and uh, basically every, every language try to implement regex in it so it's not uh, only in Python it's, it's found in all the programming languages so first of all let's import regex library from Python and um, this regex module is a newer module in Python um, there was the RE module you might find either tutorials import um, RE this is uh, also the regular expression library but regex is a new one and uh, it's going to replace RE eventually so uh, it's better to use this one one. So let's define a text. This is a tweet. Basically, hello guys, this is my first tweet. And as you see here, we have some hashtags uh, and we need to extract them. Um, our main feature or our main goal in this tutorial is to extract the uh, the hashtags from the text. So first of all, let's see the first function we're going to deal with is find all. Find all function is a function that you pass a string or a regular expression and it find it inside some kind of text. So it search for the hashtags inside tweet and it find only the hashtags, like if you count them, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and these are the six hashtags that can be found in text. Um, but what if we search for another hashtag, like MLB, you're going to find it. And this, these operations uh, does not have anything interesting in them, actually string functionality uh, already do this with without any headache of regex but let's keep going uh, we will know later how to uh, use the power of regex there's a function called sub which is basically uh, the same of replace in a string except that it accepts regular expression and it can go further than just replacing some text in the string so we pass the string that we want to substitute we want to change and uh, we want to change it by what the the string that you want to change it so here we basically change all the hashtags into an underscore and you can see here all the hashtags has been translated to an underscore and there is a function called split this is pretty much the same as the string split function but it also accepts regular expressions so it will come in handy when we introduce the regular expressions or the regular patterns so let's take a look at the regular expressions or pattern um, these are the patterns here the regular expression pattern and this is its functionality like for example a to z or 0 to 9 you basically tell the regular expression that you search for a character in the characters from a to z and these are in small letter in lowercase so he will only search for the lowercase characters uh, the dot operator the dot operator basically search for any character except for the new line here the slash w match any word character like all the characters from a to z uh, either small uh, upper cases or lower case it match either of them and all the numbers and the underscore the the inverse of this is the uh, the slash w but in an upper case basically any character that does not match it here like all the characters that are not a to z and zero to nine and underscore like at for example or hashtag and all these kind of stuff uh, backslash b is the boundary between the words basically spaces the back the slash s match any single white character like a space for a new line or return or any of these if you make an s in upper case it matches any non-white character and these are the backslash t backslash n backslash r these are all the new line and the tab characters uh, that you use in your normal files a backslash d basically is a decimal number it search for any digit from zero to nine the anchor here uh, search for that matches the start of the string and the lower sign matches the end of the string so so let's make use of these uh, regular expression like for example here we will find all the hashtags followed by slash w small uh, the slash w basically is any character so we are going to search for any hashtag followed by one character in the tweet so uh, when you run this cell you can find that it catches all the hashtags and the following characters so you can see here that we have moved forward now we have 
uh, one word, one hashtag followed by a character if we add another character. So we will have two characters if we had three and so on. But what if we want to make it like generic, like for example, a character or more? Uh, for this, there is the repetition cases. Um, there is a bigger expressions actually for these kind of stuff also. Like you can see here, the question mark, uh, basically, what's what this expression tell is that it's going to search for R, U, B, and Y. Y can be there or not. So the character that is uh, followed by question mark is optional. It can be there or not. The asterisks make the character right before it, it will be appearing zero or more times. Uh, so the difference here is that it will only appear once or, the, or don't appear. Like it's only once or nothing. Uh, and the, the asterisk here tells that we are going to have either a character, we cannot have a character, or we can have multiple characters. The plus sign tells that they're going to have one or more that so we, we cannot you cannot have uh, zero character of the y you have to have at least one character so um these these three are wild card you can you can say that because you don't have to specify specific number of characters of course except for this one you have to have one character but what if you say for example you need to have three exactly characters uh for example for the digits for example so this one says we need a digit and we need to have three of them. Um, there's also diff different uh, cases where you have like for example three or more or three to five. Uh, this is basically you know like growing by number you need a specific number of values. So let's go and try to extract the hashtags once more. So we now say that we need a hashtag followed by one or more characters. So that it's, that's it. Uh, that's how you extract the uh, the hashtags. Of course you can have hashtags like more complex like for example having a hyphen or something so uh, this is the basic way of extracting the hashtags also we can extract the words in the same fashion like for example you search for a character or more which is basically the words notice here that the explanation mark is not it does not appear here and uh, we have here explanation mark and also we have a comma and they does not appear here so this is basically you only extract the words inside your text so uh, Let's do some operation if we need, for example, to substitute all the hashtags with a hashtag uh, word, capital hashtag word. This will be useful in the natural language processing. For example, if you need to like replace specific characters or specific patterns with specific words to remove them. Uh, like in this case, for example, we, we need to change the hashtags into a, a hashtag word. Uh, so you can see, you see how to use it using the sub function. You define the regular expression and then you use the words or the expression also that you can replace them by. In this expression, we change all the white space into the underscore, and uh, basically all the non characters like exclamation mark and the comma and all this kind of stuff are changed into underscore, as you can see. So, another key concept to talk about is the grouping character. Like, for example, here, let's say that we want to search for Python but with a uh, lowercase or a uppercase. So, you can use this expression, which is basically the square braces here. Use the square braces here means any of the inside characters like you have you can have b capital or b small and uh, you can see here for example you have ruby that ends either with y or uh, e this for example mean all the vowels you can have any of the vowels this for example match all the numbers from 0 to 9 this matches all the character from a to z in lowercase this matches all the character from a to z but uppercase this match all the characters small lowercase and uppercase and number and uh, if we use anchor here inside this uh, square braces, so this means any characters except for these characters. So it match any except for the voiles. Here also it match any except for the digits. So let's see a simple application on them. Here we have some text, Python the great language. I love to write and buy. What a cool language Python is. And the pyramids of Giza are so huge. You can see here that uh, here we have Python, start with by, and by also is a shortcut for Python, and uh, here we talk about Python, but here we talk about the premise. So what if we need to do, like, for example, text classification that uh, decide whether or not this uh, input text is about Python, it's talking about Python, so it's going to be in our interest or not. So let's take a look at this. Uh, for the text and text, we're going to loop uh, in this text array, and um, for each text, we will have a regular expression that finds all the... Uh, 
Python expression. So let's work through this expression. First, we have the Python word. Uh, this is the character, uh, this is the expression that we talk about very well. So this will match Python either with B capital or a small letter. And this is OR character here. Uh, the OR operation can be used also with regular expressions. So you can use multiple expressions and the expression will match either of them. So now we have also another expression which is basically match by the by word either B capital or B small, but this this expression need to be ended with the boundary. As you can recall, the backslash B here means a boundary of words. So backslash B here means that this will be a word and will not have any following text. So for example, the pyramids here, it's BY, but it has following characters. So this is not a boundary. This is a uh, words here, characters. So it does not, it will not be matched here. So if the Python detected, we're going to print this interesting because this is a uh, phrase that we're interested in, else we are not going to print as. Uh, we're going to print not. So uh, here you can see that the Python is a great language. It's interesting. It is indeed have a Python inside it. This I love to write in by interesting. Uh, what a cool language Python is. But you can see here that the pyramids is not. It does not match it any of these regular expressions as you can see. So another example. Let's see some examples on the regular expression. For example, here we have some text. For this example, we search for regular word, but only in the front of the text, like the very first character. So here's the regular expression for this. We search for the regular that is only at the, the beginning of the text. So we have two regular here. We have first one here and we have the second one here. But we're also only interested in this one. We need to capitalize this one. So let's see the output of the cell. And you can see here is regular expression. The first character got capitalized, but the later one was not uh, changed. The backslash in here, you can see here, because this string have multiple lines. So the backslash in uh, because of the lines. So let's see. You can search for a number. For example, here we need to search for a year. So it's almost 2020. So so uh, happy new year. So we will search for e any digits that have four of them. Like for example, it's almost 2020. Happy new year um, for all of you, for example. So let's see what the output will be. It will only parse the uh, number that is that has three digits, uh, four digits, sorry. So it's the year here. Let's see another example here. If we need to change the numbers inside the text into just the word number, uh, we can change here any character between zero and nine uh, one or more of them, we will change it by the word number, and this is pretty useful when we come later into sentiment analysis and text classification, as we will talk about this later actually, but it's pretty useful uh, to have inside your tools. So let's take a look at another case here. For example, see we have uh, this text, and we need to extract the email from the text, and we also need to know the, uh, the, the details of the email, okay? Like for example here, we need to extract from this text the username and the company. So let's take a look at this expression. We're going to use search function of the regular expression. And what search does basically is allow us to extract group of the regular expression. Notice here that we use the R before the string to emphasize that this is a row string. Like, like for example, if we have any characters inside it, do not deal with them. Like for example, the backslash N and the backslash R and all these kind of stuff. Do not uh, treat them as a new line character. Just treat them as normal character. It's a row string. Let's take a look at the expression itself. A, the the parentheses here emphasize a group. So this is a group one, and uh, this is a group two. Sorry, this is a group two. So what we are searching for here is we search for any basically character or dot. And notice here that we use the backslash dot here to emphasize that this is a literal dot. Because if you use a dot without the backslash here, we said any, we, it's like we're saying basically any character, but we use the slash to emphasize that we search for the explicitly the dot, the letter dot. And also we are going to add the hyphen because the username may have hyphen. So the username may have five hyphen or a dot or any character and uh, one or more of them, okay? So this would be followed by a at, and then we will have the address here, and basically the address or the company will be the same as the username. So uh, inside the email address, and uh, this result will be uh, saved in a match, and in this match you can have the group function, which basically return the whole expression, the this whole expression, and there is a group one, which basically return the first group, which is the first parentheses, and group two, which is return the uh, second parentheses or the second group. So let's take a look at the output, and you can see here it returns the uh, the match group, which is basically the whole regular expression that we matched, and then the first group, which is the username, and the second group, which is the company. So that's pretty much it for this video. So let's recap what we have done so far. We have 
We now know how to define regular expression, how to search for a pattern inside a text, and how to process text patterns, and how also to extract useful information from text. And um, in the next video, we're going to start making a hands-on project uh, where we are going to extract useful information from tweets. So uh, see you guys in the next one.